American Tea Souls Free Friday Webinar. I'm Shelly Sanchez Terrell, your hostess, and today we are going to be talking about activities that explore Black Friday and Cyber Monday, which are two events that are coming up very soon. Uh, does anyone know what these two events are, and do these two events happen or in your country? Um, and the reason we're going to explore this is because it's very interesting for learners. Um, but before we go any further, just to let you know about the webinars, we're here every Friday. It's free. You get a recording. You get all the bookmarks. You also get a certificate uh, by American TESOL. So uh, you could go to um, ShellyTerrell.com webinars slash webinars, and you'll be able to find the links for all of that. You can actually, there's a lot of adults that will be very interested in this topic and it'll spark a lot of different discussion and debate. Um, you can learn a lot of culture um, when teaching this uh, subject. And this event, it started in the US, but it not only happens in the US. But the main topic of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, these are two of the biggest e shopping events that occur. So a lot of businesses around the world want to know about these events. And they also um, plan for these events because this is when they can make some of the most money. Um, I really like this quote by Bo Derek, who is a supermodel, and she says, um, whoever said that money can't buy happiness simply didn't know where to go shopping. And the events really do focus on that. They, they, they are about shopping and where to shop because there are many different deals that occur on those two dates. So I'm going to tell you a little about those two shopping events. Um, but you could always post this quote and you could always get a lot of discussion from this. Uh, for example, do you believe that it's true that do you believe that money can buy happiness if you shop at the right places? And and this is also taken as a metaphor. Um, I don't think she only meant like physical places you shop at, but I, I think she was focusing on, on buying things as well. Um, but we're going to start off with Black Friday because this was the earliest event that was created for businesses. And you can teach, one of the things you can teach is an idiom um, and also a, a phrase. Um, there's a phrase called in the red and in the black. And these are famous English phrases that have to do with accounting um, and, and profits. So businesses know about this because if you're in the red, what do you think in the red would mean? Um, and you can you can generate a lot of discussion about this, um, the difference between red and black and how we connotate these. Um, and so uh, red would be that you are, if you're a company and you have, uh, if you're in the red, then that would be something that you would not like at all <laughs> because that means you're losing money. Um, but if you're in the black, that means that you're doing very well and you're um, starting to generate profit. So um, a lot of companies want to be in the black. And so Black Friday actually came from this, this saying, um, according to Wikipedia, uh, because it, it's uh, Black Friday is always the day after Thanksgiving. So it's always November the 26th. And a lot of times it, this year they're starting even on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and what it is is businesses uh, around um, the U.S., Canada, uh, different places. I believe Hungary was one of them as well. There's a lot of different uh, countries now that are uh, their businesses are participating in Black Friday. And Black Friday means that they put different types of sales. They open the store at hours they would normally throughout the year never open the store. Um, and they have um, different prizes, um, specials, discounts. And people tend to go very crazy about it. At least in America, sometimes there's violence. Sometimes there's an item uh, such as a Tickle Me Elmo one year 
that um and it's Elmo from Sesame Street and this little stuffed animal ended up um being sold out and and kids wanted them so parents were actually paying uh a thousands of dollars even up to ten thousand dollars for these um Elmo dolls that were originally about ten fifteen dollars so so Black Friday definitely has had an impact on um society and so a lot of your students would be very interested and you can have a lot of debate about that whether they approve of Black Friday whether they would participate in Black Friday um, it, and it's one of the biggest uh, selling events and the reason why is because uh, during the day after Thanksgiving is when people begin to shop for Christmas um, they start shopping for their families and um, this actually started in Philadelphia, and it got very popular, the word, in 1975, even though uh, the word actually came out in 1961. So one of the first activities you can do with your learners is you can have them begin to research stories, and you can even do it on Google. It's, it's quite easy, on shopper violence. Um, and then also shopper campout. So they can even do this on YouTube because for some stores, they're, whatever the item is that they have, uh, sometimes they, for example, usually this has to do with either a physical console, um, so like a Wii, um, if it's the newest Wii, and sometimes they'll have it for $50, um, very, very, very cheap. So some shoppers will even take tents and they will stay at the store for, uh, for they will spend the night at the store so they can be the first one in line because they only sell a limited number of these Wii's for $50, for example. So a lot of uh, shoppers now camp out at these. Um, and yesterday I was actually seeing a news uh, report on TV where one business had people shop uh, camping out already. They were already had set up their tent because they wanted this item and they wanted to be the first in line. So people tend to go very um, to the extreme during this uh, holiday. And then they also, in the stores, it's kind of a madhouse. When you go, you see people and they begin to... Uh, fight each other for the different items uh, because there's only a limited number and and then after that they have to pay um, the regular price on a different day. So it, sometimes it can definitely bring out the worst in people and that's um, you can definitely show one of the YouTube videos and you can generate a conversation and debate that has to go with this. This is a really good time if you teach CLIL, um, if you teach content language integrated learning, or if you teach math. Yes, exactly, Bogey. It could generate a really good discussion about consumerism. Um, and also the ethics of different stores um, and, and companies, like what is their responsibility? Um, it, it, because this has actually been happening since 1975. So um, you would imagine that companies would would try to prevent this, but they actually don't because it still continues. Um, this is a good time for students to be able to also, your learners, not only to learn English, but they can learn uh, by creating graphs and charts and infographics. So we're going to talk about lessons that deal with that. But you, one of the great tools that you can use that is free is uh, Google Spreadsheets. So your students can actually have a survey and they can survey people um, about, for example, what stores would they want to go sh uh, shopping at, um, what do they believe are going to be the hottest selling items of the year, what do they believe, um, and they can, they can survey. And then Google Spreadsheets, or they can even collect data, and Google Spreadsheets will automatically take the data and it'll create um, charts out of it. So uh, the students can, it, and it'll make it um, like a report. So your students get to learn a lot about uh, math um, and statistics, and they get to see it visually. So if you're teaching language learners and you have them uh, create one of these surveys, uh, the visuals that come with Google Spreadsheets, and your students don't have to be um, 
and, and no problem. Good, great to see you, Peggy. Um, your students don't have to be math experts because Google does a lot of this for them. Uh, but it's a nice visual for them to be able to understand the results of the survey that they took. So I really like Google. Um, uh, I love Google spreadsheets for that. There's an app now. Um, it's a free app that you can put on your um, on your mobile device. Uh, you could get it on Android or your iOS, and you actually have to download that. Uh, but it does let you edit um, and spreadsheets from your phone. So that's very exciting. One of my favorite activities that I try to get teachers to do is create infographics because infographics are a great way to visualize data or to even teach with infographics. So an infographic is what it does is it takes uh, different types of facts and it makes it very visual like a visual poster just like this one. So blackfriday.fm and that's the website you can go to conducted a survey for 2014 and they put the results over here um oh i didn't even know they were uh they had uh, thank you for sharing that peggy because i didn't even know this event was happening um and so they took the results and they went ahead and they made this infographic and it has a lot of different um statistics so uh, before you show your students this infographic when you're teaching an infographics one of the things you can do is have them make predictions so you can ask them a question for example who do you believe are um do you believe it shops the most during black friday um male or females and what you can do is you can hide the answer and then you can also say uh, so most of them of course are going to guess the majority are women but what you can do is you can say well what kind of a percentage of males participate in Black Friday and what kind of percentage of females. And so you'll get different answers and they'll really be able to pay attention to the data. Um, you can ask them what is the age group that um, goes and, and also, oh, I can, I can, I'll share that in just a sec. But the good thing about this one is it's already created for you. So you can generate a lot of discussion. Um, but I would suggest that if you're showing it, um, that you only show bits and pieces so that way they can they can guess the results. Um, and they can also, you can even put them in groups and they can come up with their predictions and they can put the support behind those predictions. They can say, well, we believe that... Um, of personal and then you can talk about any surprises they have um, so for example I think it's kind of a little surprising um, that 35 to 30 25 to 34 year olds would be the age level that shops the most I would think it would be 35 to 44 but I guess not <laughs> um, and then to it says what doorbuster deals so that might be a vocabulary word that your students may want to learn so that's a great time to even teach um, uh, you can teach vocabulary so when you're asking um, you can say you know what do you believe uh, do looking at the infographic they actually have a visual so they can they can guess what the meaning of doorbuster deal uh, what that means um, so what doorbuster deals are are the cells that go around and what you can do is you can um, you can also um, see which ones are the most popular and as it shows there it's electronics and that includes game consoles so you can go and you can visit that um, once again you're gonna find the links at the pearl trees and I'll share that at the end again um, and the other part is you can after your students learn about Black Friday then what you can do is you can create, um, you you can have them write down their wish list, and they, you can have them um, decide, you know, which stores they're going to go visit. They could go look at this, and then they can create a plan on how they are going to be successful. Uh, remember, they only have a limited number of the deals. So, for example, I was saying if they sell a Wii for fifty dollars. Um, they may only sell a hundred of these Wii's for fifty dollars, and then after that, it's gone. So a lot of of shoppers 
um, have to strategize. Um, plus, a lot of the stores will open at 4, 3 in the morning. So um, they, your students can prepare a plan on how they're going to get there early. Um, now, the store may not, you know, they may decide your, with the, and they can do this in groups. They may decide, okay, we're going to go and we're going to, the store opens at 4 in the morning, but we're going to go at 1 in the morning. Well, what are they going to need while they're waiting for three hours? Maybe snacks, uh, maybe something to drink. Maybe a way to entertain themselves. So these are all things that become part of their plan. And then they can come up with a strategy. You know, they can even go as far as mapping out the store. And they can uh, come up with strategies on how to make sure they get everything on their shopping items and wish list. And so um, this ends up becoming a lot of fun for them because then they're trying to be a smart shopper and make sure they're the ones getting the deals. Now, you can spark a lot of controversy and you can ask them which they're going to participate in because another event that now has taken place during Black Friday is also Buy Nothing Day. So you can decide to be either a person who supports Buy Nothing Day where this is, uh, many people are upset with Black Friday. They think um, what happens during it is, is actually very um, upsetting. So what they do is um, they have created this buy nothing day where people will actively not buy anything. Yeah, um, so what I do, I, I'm more the type to, to participate in the buy nothing day versus um, a Black Friday. I don't like lines. Um, I, I prefer the next event we're going to talk about, which is Cyber Monday. So Cyber Monday is one of my favorite shopping holidays because this is where you shop for different sales. Um, and this is the Monday following Thanksgiving, and it's uh, two days after the Black Friday. But I prefer this because I prefer shopping on the Internet. So you can find a lot of different um, companies around the world who offer very, very, very good deals. And this makes it a wonderful way for your learners to learn online. So they can do a lot of internet research. They can gather their own statistics. Um, and they can start. One of the things you can have your students do um, is they can, with their wish list, they can search for the best deals and compare them to uh, Black Friday versus what they're going to be like um, for Cyber Monday, okay? So um, they research the best deals for the, their items. They list down two or three stores. They can choose two or three stores that they are going to choose to, um, or they can give you a list of five stores that they can um, shop, they can plan, and this is pretend. Um, I mean, they can, if they're adults, they can go ahead and go for it. Um, but when you're getting them to research the best deals, they can also um, come up with a strategy for that too because with Cyber Monday, they give you time limits. So um, not only do they give you a limit sometimes with the items, they only sell 100 items for this amount, uh, but they also will sometimes uh, put a time on it. They'll only give you an hour to do this or 30 minutes or 5 minutes. Uh, so if you are not on that site, then you can miss out on a deal. Some of the top ones for Cyber Monday are Amazon. A lot of people, um, that's one of the, the, the ones that does the best. Um, Shopping.org is, is actually what, what created Cyber Monday, and this was in 2005. Um, and then you can also predict the hottest selling items. Um, the infographic said usually it's electronics, but a lot of times there are certain toys that end up becoming really hot selling items and once they sell out um, they become very valuable and their their net worth increases so um, your students can predict all of this before cyber um, Monday and Black Friday and what they can do is then during the event they can watch online and they can watch the news and they can see whose prediction came right um, so that's so they learn a lot that way and they're very engaged. 
they can also predict which companies are going to make the most profit. So this is a great way to uh, teach business English because they have to study the companies. And they can study the products that the companies are going to sell and the deals they're going to have for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And then they can use this information and they can predict and make the predictions of the companies. Now, um, here we go. So uh, my favorite way to create infographics is with this free tool called PictoChart. Um, you can add links, you can add graphics, and it has different types of uh, templates for you. So here's one that co is a comparison and contrast one. So one of the things you can have your students do is, excuse me, they can create this infographic and they just change coffee versus tea it lets you edit all of this um, and they compare and contrast Black Friday versus Cyber Monday deals so you take about uh, one company you can even have them work in pairs um, and what they do it might be Amazon I, I mean it might be something like Best Buy so they because Best Buy participates in both Cyber Monday and Best Buy participates in um, Black Friday as well and so they can compare and contrast the deals, maybe um, w w where they make the most money. Um, they can add a lot of different statistics and information. So it's something t of interest so they can see what's the event that's actually going to save them the most money. Now, a lot of this research they can find if they go to blackfriday.com. And one of the cool things now is with the mobile device, they can actually download the free app for um, for Android or iOS, um, your iPhone, your iPad. And they can carry this around with them. So they take the learning with them. And they'll if you teach adult students and they want to save money and uh, your country takes part in any of these um, in Black Friday, then they'll really enjoy this and uh, really thank you because you get to save them money. Another thing, uh, when you're having students actually create these wish lists and they're doing the research on what's going to be the best deal, um, for example, if they have a, um, let's say they want to get a Wii, okay? So if they research the different companies and they see, for example, on Cyber Friday, Walmart might be, have the best deal. They can really use these wish charts and they can give them to their parents. And they can say, look, mom and dad, I did this research and I found out, um, you know, where, where I found out how I could save you money. So the parents will really appreciate this because one, they see the learning that's taking place, but then they're applying it to real life. So I think um, when we teach, I always try to aim to where it really has a, an impact, an immediate impact in their lives. So um, that's one thing they can do. Um, you can have, um, you can find all of these links if you go to this particular pearl tree. And I think I put the wrong, um, I think I put the, the wrong link for PictoChart. So let me get that for you, uh, PictoChart here. And then I'll also give you the Black Friday, uh, I mean, uh, bookmarks as well. And you'll see different articles there. Uh, and, and then also places that you can create charts and graphs. Because when they're doing their research, when they have a company that they decide to research, they can even do things where they can make an infographic and they can show which was the best Black Friday for them, which was the highest uh, profit margin. And then they can make um, predictions off of that. Why? They can ask themselves, why, you know, this company, and then they can make also strategies and plans with that oh well you had this deal and that's why so many people came so these are all ways to really get your business learners if you teach business English but if you teach high school adults to really think about statistics and see statistics visually I think for language learners that's really important but students in general um, they can they can do all of this research, they can visualize it, but then on the day of the event, they can actually go to a store and they can see this happen. Or if 
they, you don't have Black Friday at your um, in your country, and some countries don't have this, um, then you can always have your students observe what happens on Cyber Monday. And so it's interesting because everything that they research, they get to see in action and how it all plays out. And so um, I think students get very interested in that. So thank you so much, and I will, I hope you all have a good weekend, and next week, I believe, we're going to go ahead, and I think we might be starting Chris, I mean, holiday activities, so um, thank you so, so much uh, for coming, and 